Let's consider prayer. Uh, there are three kinds of prayer. Maybe we could say three attitudes in prayer. Uh, and I want to concentrate on urgent prayer. There is prayer which is uh, praise and worshipful. So we, we lift up our hearts and voices to God in prayer. We're f it's full of love that's full of thanks. It comes from a humble heart, full of love. And that's praise and worshipful prayer. And we should always have that element in all of our prayers. It's the beginning of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, and then the praise, hallowed be thy name. You are worthy of praise and glory and honour. And then there's prayer, which is the regular all of life committing prayer. Uh, so it comes under maybe give us this day our daily bread in that great prayer that Jesus taught. It's prayer for the regular work of the church, for prayer for good governance in society, you know, pray for those who rule over you, says Paul. Prayer for ongoing faithfulness, Lord, keep me close to you. It's, it, it, are those kinds of prayers, the regular foundation prayers, we could call them. And then there's urgent prayer. And this is what I want to think about today. Prayer propelled by a serious and often very immediate need. Let's consider three examples of urgent prayer. The first one is a parable Jesus tells after sharing the Lord's Prayer as a pattern for prayer. And he tells the story of a man who has a guest arrive unexpectedly and he just does not have the resources to feed this guest. It is obviously late at night and his neighbour is reluctant to help because he has settled down for the night as has his family. But Jesus says he may not get up and give you the bread you need to feed your guest willingly because of friendship, but he will do so because of your sheer audacity, your persistence. Now, is he describing God as a bad neighbour? No. But what he's saying is, if a bad neighbour would do that, how much more a loving, caring, gracious, highly resourced God? So, don't be afraid to ask to seek, to knock, because God will give you what you desire, what you're asking for and what you're seeking for. Notice here the urgency of the situation. Uh, the man comes and he's, he's hungry and the, the, the householder has nothing to give this guest, this hungry, uh, tired, bedraggled guest and uh, so there's the urgency and it's it's a very real urgency and it reveals a lack of resources many a christian has felt this they have felt as they have done good and cared for people that very soon their resources have run out even in fact a hymn writer would write when we reach the end of our hoarded resources the father's forgiving has only begun. I'm sure there are times in your life when you've reached the end of your resources, your emotional resources, your physical resources of your strength and your financial resources. But remember, God gives. God gives to those he calls to serve. And if God has placed people into your life that he wants you to take care of and to serve, then he will give you the resources that you need to do that work. We just need to go to him. And sometimes we go in great urgency. Sometimes we go, as this man does, it seems, late at night, aware of utter dependence upon God to provide for others. But this is what God desires. And this is what God longs for. He longs that we would place all of our life 
all of our strength, all of our hope, all of our powers into his hands and that we would seek to do what he desires us do and he promises to provide for us. I wonder what we would need in the next few years as we seek to tell people about Jesus Christ, as we seek to build a church. We will soon run out of our own very hoarded and very limited resources. But remember, in urgency we can turn to God and find that he will help us in times of trouble and need. And it's a very encouraging thing. Maybe that's where we'll be very quickly if we're not already there now. But we're encouraged to pray and to be serious about it and urgent. Now the situation that leads to this next prayer time in a church that is full of pleading and urgency is the arrest of Peter. Uh, Peter has been arrested in Acts chapter 12. This has happened a few times and Peter's been arrested again and imprisoned and he's in real trouble because the uh, religious leaders are after him this time. And so there he is locked up in prison and back at a house the church are praying and in a miraculous and amazing way an angel is sent by God and Peter walks out of the prison and he goes to this house where there's prayer and we read that many people had gathered and were praying it's uh, Mary the mother of John's so it's the Apostle John's mother's house many people were praying they were gathered there and they were praying what for for the urgent need of a persecuted Christian so this is about persecution they're praying for Peter they're praying that God would uphold him and God would strengthen him and God would release him and while they're praying God answers the prayer and a servant girl called Rhoda goes to the door because someone's banging on the door disturbing their prayer time and she hears Peter's voice she doesn't open the door she runs back and she says Peter's at the door and they go yes you're crazy you're out of your mind they told her so while they were praying they didn't really they didn't really expect God to ask answer so quickly what they asked and uh, God answered so fast that they were they weren't ready for it and he answered in a way that they uh, I suspect they thought you know there's going to be a trial and, and God help uh, Peter through the trial and the questioning and he's at the front door they open it and they're astonished and he tells them to be quiet and he tells them how the Lord brought him out of prison and uh, how God had cared for him and he said now tell the other brothers you know tell the other brothers what happened and then he went he left for another place he, he made a, a tactical exit and sometimes you do make a tactical exit when you're being persecuted and certainly Peter thought it was time to do so so this is prayer for a persecuted church for a persecuted Christian and there's an urgency to it isn't there because the Christian is in very real danger and we can think ourselves of people that uh, we we've heard of over the years who are in uh, real danger because they are believers and they're doing God's work and there's a real urgency to that isn't there we can think maybe of the situation in Myanmar at this time and of the church that's there and the persecuted church and we pray for them and pray for God's protection through a time of great difficulty and lawlessness and that, that would cause us to pray urgently wouldn't it now this third and last uh, passage of the Bible is slightly different but there is an urgency to it we read of Jesus going through the towns and villages proclaiming the good news 
and he sees the crowds and he has compassion on them. They're like sheep without a shepherd. And so he turns to his disciples and he says, here's an urgent prayer. The harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. This is a situation where the need and the resources are unbalanced. The opportunity and the resources are unbalanced. Here are people, they're in great need. They are, they are like sheep without a shepherd. They are so lost. Uh, they are helpless and they need a shepherd. But more work needs to be done. And there are not enough people to do it. Jesus is going round. The disciples are going round. There's only a few of them. And he says, now pray to the Lord of the harvest. The illustration here is of uh, a farmer. And he has fields. And they've come to harvest time. And they need to be cut down. And the grain needs to be brought into the storage. And uh, the work has to be done but there are not enough workers so there would be someone and he would be uh, sent into the town to find workers to come and do the harvest so that it wouldn't be spoiled or lost uh, jesus looks and he sees all these people and all their great need and they need to be brought in and brought in to jesus christ and brought in to the harvest that the harvest is ready that needs to be brought in to the Saviour. So God the Father then is in a way here the Lord of the harvest and we must pray to him. We can think of the situation that we live in today and there are so few churches in the UK and so few churches in Wales and such great need and people really are quite lost, harassed and helpless. That harassed really describes our day doesn't it? Harassed and helpless, it kind of describes our day. It describes the day that we're living in. But where are the people who will share the good news? They're not around, are they? Well, what you have to do is ask. Pray. There's an urgency. There's an urgency. And we're called to pray. Pray that God would send workers. This is an important one, and uh, it, it raises that great question, do we really see as God sees things? And are the things that are important to God important to us? And how do we make them so, if they're not? Let me ask a few questions as we come to a conclusion. What do you consider to be urgent need? Is it only one kind of thing? Health matters. Do you only pray for people's illness? Is it persecution matters? Are you driven by prayer for persecuted people? Is it the condition of society? Does that make you pray? Do you see the need? Is it prayer for workers in a day of harvest? Is it prayer for men and women to be saved? What is important? What is urgent? What do we pray for? I suspect that our prayer lives in many occasions and in many instances are short and brief and limited because we do not see things the way God sees them and we do not pray to God the way that we should. We're not telling him anything new. What we're actually doing is we're bringing ourselves and our desires and our perceptions in line with his and with him. And it's vital that we do so. And it's vital that as we do so, we live and act by faith. What does urgency look like in prayer? And are you ever urgent? And if so, what are you urgent about? And how can we correct 
our errors in this area of prayer. Let me pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer. We recognise its priority on our lives, but we have to confess prayers are not as urgent as they should be because we do not see things the way that you see them. And sometimes we fail to acknowledge what is truly important and vital in this world and we do not set the time aside and the effort to bring our thoughts and our desires and our will into line with your thoughts and desires and your will. Help us to be urgent, Lord. Help us to be passionate in our prayers. Help us to really, truly see the need as you see it. For your honour and glory. Amen.